Let's get started with the practical implementation of QTP. We'll click on this icon over here. This is Quick Test Professional. First screen which you're gonna see is Add in Manager. So guys, if you think your application under test supports particular environment, you can choose Add in Manager accordingly. For example, let's say right now I know that my application under test supports .NET. So I chose .NET, ActiveX, web or WPF. Web is for web-based application. WPF is window presentation foundation. That means if you think your application is window-based application, then you can choose this option over here. Do not choose everything in your add-in manager because if you'll choose everything, it's going to degrade performance of QTP. We'll click on OK over here. So guys, this is the interface of QTP. Let's get navigated through few of the features over here. This is record. If you want to record any test case, you can click on that. So first I'll show you how we record any test case. Only two things should be open on your screen. One, QTP. And second should be your application under test. In this case, I'm going to test applications flight reservation module, not login. So I'm going to log in. Password should be Merkley. Username should be anything between 4 to 10 characters. I'm just going to click on OK. So guys, this is my AUT. I'm going to test this application throughout these videos. So this is date of flight, fly from, fly to. So I will be navigating you through this application with first recording. So let's see how to record any test case on a particular application. I'll click on record over here. So first I'm going to choose Windows based application. And I'm choosing this record and run test on any open Windows based application. So if you have any Windows based application open, it's going to get executed on that. If you want to run your test case on a particular application, you can choose this and add the address of your application over here. Then automatically it will go to that application and you can start recording it. So right now I just want to record flight reservation application. So I'm choosing this because if I'll choose this option and I add flight application, it will start from login. I don't want to start from login. I want to start from flight reservation. So I'm choosing this. Click on OK. You are in a recording mode. You can see this option over here. Recording started. I'm activating my screen and here adding date. Fly from. Our fly from and fly to should not be same. Choosing flights. So you can check your criteria and choose flight accordingly. Here we will be providing name. Choose number of tickets. So tickets cannot be more than 10 at a time. This is a condition on this application. Choosing class. Clicking on insert order. I'm going to reset after this and stop recording. So guys, look at this. You have two views. One is called expert view and another is called keyword view. So guys, expert view, as the name suggests, it has all the programming over here. This is VB script. If you are good in VB script, you can use this view. But let's say your manual tester just shifted to automation testing. You don't have much idea about VB script you do have this view called keyword view. So QTP took care of all type of users. If you're a manual tester, this is your view. If you are automation expert, automation specialist, you already have very good hold on VB script. You can use this particular view. So both of the options have been provided to you by QTP. Now guys, this is the recording. You can see these are the objects we have. These are the operations on it. This is the input data and you have this documentation. Documentation have all the steps over there. Make flight reservation window active. Type this date in the mask ED box ActiveX object. So QTP will create documentation automatically. Now all this information is being stored somewhere. So as we understood that QTP works on record and run feature. Obviously, it recorded everything, but where the recording is stored now? What is considered to be as brain of QTP? So guys, brain of QTP is object repository, which is here. When you click on resources, this option here, 
object repository we'll click on that look at this all the objects which you have recorded are stored here guys if any of the object is not here and you want to perform any operation on it you cannot do that because memory of qtp will not recognize that object so let's say one of the object is not there and you want to write any operation on it you have to first add that object over here then only you can write any operation on it so this is must this is mandatory now let's understand some features of qtp's object repository first over here is called object spy object spy will help you to find out properties of object in your aut let's see how it works so i'll click on that this hand icon will appear we'll click on this your application will come here so look at this name class you will see all the object properties related to it so if you see name here look at that it is under window and this is win edit and name is attached text if you read here i'll just click on it attached text is name so you can see all the properties x axis y axis what is height of this particular box so all these properties you can see guys how you are able to see all these properties because you in the beginning you selected dot net as add in manager that's how qtp is able to recognize its environment so add in manager is very important so here with the help of object spy you can get properties of all the objects and accordingly you can write any operation on it so this is what object spy is now next option over here is locate in repository so there sometimes it happens that you you are not sure that whether that object is there in your repository or not if it is there in your repository where it is located sometimes all object have same name then how to find out where this particular object is located let's see how it works so locate in repository helps us to find out the object in your repository so let's say i'll click on that choose any of the object here so i'm going to choose this price and i know i have not recorded price so price should not be there in my repository so this is how you can locate whether this particular object is there in your repository or not let's say now i want to perform some operations on price but first i have to check whether price is there in my repository or not because as i have told you you cannot perform any action if object is not there in your object repository so let's see i want to see whether price is there or not so i'll click on this object i'll click on okay see cannot locate this object in the object repository so now i know that this object is not there in my object repository and if i want to perform any operation on it i need to add it in my object repository now let's see i'm going to now show you something which is there in my object repository so let's say name look at this name got highlighted that this object is there in your repository so guys this is what locate in repository feature do now next option over here is highlight in application um if let's say in my object repository i'm not sure that what is this object it's written button but which button it is i want to highlight this object in my application so this is what highlight in repository is so first you will select that object which you want to highlight and then you will click on this option highlight in application look at this this got highlighted that this button is actually this reset button over here let's try it again now i'm going to choose something which is more prominent to see so name as a highlight look at that that object will be highlighted in your application now next is define new test object guys define new test object is as i was telling you you want to perform any operation on the object that object must be there in your repository if you want to add it you have two options one define new test object and second is add object to local now let's see how both of them works so first of all define new test object guys as the name suggests you have to define everything on your own let's say scenario is that some new object will be added to this application but this object is not there right now in the application but for future i want to add that object over here 
which is right now not there in my application. So I need to define it from the beginning with everything. So look at this, how it works. You need to define environment on your own. So let's say I'm saying it is standard windows. Now I need to define the class also. So whether it is an edit box, it's a combo box. So let's say edit box. And here you can write down the name. So guys, in this case, probability of mistake is really very high because what if I misspelled it? Maybe, you know, I'm not choosing the right class because this object I'm adding from my side. So now you can click on add and see price is added here. So guys, as I've told you, there might be probability of mistakes in this case because you are defining it from the beginning on your own. But this is not the option if you already have this object there in your application. Like right now, I have price in my application. I already have this price object in my application. So if you already have object in your application, then the best option is add objects to local. I'll show you how it works. So I'm just going to delete this already added object. And then I use this option to add price. So I'll click on that. Look at this. I'll get the hand icon. I'll go ahead and click on price. Click on OK. See, price will be automatically added with all the properties. So this is the best way to add object in your repository if you already have this object in the application. Last is update from application. This feature is really very important and interesting. Why we use it, how we use it, I'll let you know. So guys, let's say if there is a change of requirement. Now client have decided that earlier name of the object was name, but now I want to change it to customer name. So if I will run this particular recording on customer name, definitely it's going to fail. Because in my object repository, name of the object is name. But in my real application, name of the object is customer name. There will be contradiction and it will fail. So if you face these type of situation, which you really want to face a lot, because there will be a lot of change of requirements. So if you face these type of situations, then the best option is update from application i'll show you how it works so i'm going to open application in which name of this particular object is customer name and then we will run this recording on that application i'll show you how so we go to my computer c drive program files hp samples So this is the application. If you open this, let's say, so condition is same. Username should be 4 to 10 and password should be Mercury. Click on OK. See here, name of the object is customer name. If I'll run this recording on this, it will fail at this step. Because here we have name and in my application, I have customer name. Let's see how it works. So I'm going to close my previous application in which name of the object is name. So I'm just going to close it and I will execute this test case on this application. So I will click on run. Look at this. It is executing, but it got stuck on customer name. Because in my recording it is name and in actual it is customer name. So there is a contradiction. This object is not there in the object repository of this test case. So let's see. Let's wait for the error. So error is cannot identify the object name. Verify this object's property match and object currently displayed in your application. So you can see over here that it is not matching. In object repository, it's name. In real application, it is customer name. I'm just going to stop this and let's fix it. So we'll go to object repository. Choose the object which we want to change. Go to update from application. Click on the object. 
which you want to attach over there so i want customer name to be there in my object repository i'll click on that and look at this i click on ok if you read here attach text is customer name now let's execute this and see how it works now let's reset this data and now we will run the same program over there so i'm closing object repository and executing this so look at this it took date fly from fly to flight and name also because now we have updated object repository with the element on the application with the object on the application now it again got stuck because here it is insert and in that application it is insert order so same step you will be doing again you can update insert order with insert over here so guys this is how object repository works and these are the all feature which gonna help us a lot to find out the properties of object and location of the object that's all for this video thanks for now